The following video presentation will be covering the proper servicing procedures for the Panasonic EcoEye VRF systems. The following slides will highlight some of the main indoor and outdoor unit electrical components which are utilized within the Panasonic VRF systems. The main function of the indoor unit's printed circuit board is to provide continual updated packets of information back to the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board, providing such details as the indoor unit's current demand level, any active alarms, temperature readings, along with any other parameters being monitored by the indoor unit. These indoor boards also have the ability to output different signals for controlling external devices as shown within this slide. The Mini EcoEye Outdoor Unit's main printed circuit board is the primary board which receives continual packets of information back from all of the connected indoor units. This board also monitors the current operation within the outdoor unit to make any necessary changes for optimal performance. Many of these details being reported to the outdoor board can be seen by plugging the servicing remote controller with wiring harness into the RC connector located on this board. The EcoEye Outdoor Unit's main printed circuit board is the primary board which also receives continual packets of information back from all of the connected indoor units. This board will also monitor the current operation within the outdoor unit and make any necessary changes in order to maintain optimal performance. These outdoor units, when doubled and tripled together, will also be communicating back and forth broadcasting command signals along with the current data being monitored between all of the connected outdoor units. Many of these details being reported to the outdoor board can be seen by plugging the servicing remote controller with the associated wiring harness into the RC connector located on this board. The filter board is directly inputted with the main incoming power coming off of the L1, L2, and L3 terminals where these three phases of power are landed on the outdoor unit's wiring termination strip. Once this incoming AC voltage has been conditioned by the board, it is then distributed to the main printed circuit board and bridge diode. This board is also equipped with an embedded overload circuit, which when activated will de-energize the coil of an auxiliary relay, discontinuing the flow of voltage to both the main printed circuit board and bridge diode. As seen within this slide, this filter board also has built-in fuse protection. The HIC board is the main drive circuit for the inverter-driven compressor. The drive signal generated from this board to the inverter-driven compressor can be checked by utilizing an inverter phase checker tool. The compressor when tested should have the same continuity reading between any two of the three compressor wires and show no resistance from any wire to a grounding source. This reading will range anywhere from a half a ohm to over 1 ohm and will vary slightly depending on the surrounding outdoor air temperature. The condenser fan board outputs DC voltage to the condenser fan motor to vary the speed of the motor based on the current load conditions along with other variables. The reactor removes any high harmonic waves within the electrical circuit to improve the consistency of the DC signal being utilized for the compressor and condenser fan motor drive circuits. A good reactor will have a continuity reading of around 0.2 to 0.4 ohms when tested on the lowest continuity scale. This reading will vary some depending upon the current surrounding ambient temperature. The bridge diode takes the incoming AC voltage and converts it over to DC voltage. This AC voltage will be either 208 230 volts AC or 460 volts AC depending on the outdoor unit's specified incoming supply voltage. The DC output voltage will be close to around 380 volts DC 
and can vary slightly based on the incoming AC supply voltage. This slide shows some of the recommended servicing tools for checking and diagnosing service-related issues on the Panasonic VRF systems. The gauge port access fittings on all of the Panasonic VRF outdoor units will require a 5 16 inch gauge hose connection or one of the adapters shown within this slide must be utilized. This will be the only way to conduct a pressure test, evacuation, and add or remove any refrigerant from the system. When evaluating the system's refrigerant charge, do not look at the system operating pressures by using a refrigeration compound gauge set. On variable refrigerant flow systems, these operating pressures will constantly vary dependent upon the load conditions. On systems with the following symptoms shown within this slide, the Panasonic Pack Checker tool can be utilized as a valuable resource to assist the servicer in diagnosing the problem. The Pack Checker tool will require a software program to be downloaded and installed to a laptop or iPad device before any monitoring, logging, or controlling of the Panasonic VRF systems can be performed. This software can be downloaded by accessing the web link shown within this slide. The Pack Checker tool can be installed at any one of three points within the Panasonic VRF system, being the indoor unit, outdoor unit, or central control device at the U1 and U2 low voltage communications terminals. The outdoor unit's refrigerant circuit number must be known to select the proper refrigerant circuit to be monitored, especially on installations where multiple systems are installed and the low voltage wiring is linked together through the U1 and U2 low voltage terminals. The pack checker tool will display all of the detailed information which is continuously monitored and updated by the indoor and outdoor unit's main printed circuit boards. As shown in this slide, the indoor unit's detailed information is displayed within the top section, while the outdoor unit's detailed information will be displayed within the bottom section. This slide shows where the Panasonic Pack Checker tool was utilized to diagnose a problem with a system which would not operate. As shown here, one of the indoor coil refrigerant thermistors had failed which was reporting a temperature reading of 198.5 degrees Fahrenheit which was not recognized by the indoor board. Once this thermistor was replaced, the system resumed normal operation. The EcoEye VRF indoor units utilize an electronic expansion valve which is positioned by a stepper motor for the precise metering of the refrigerant into the indoor coil. The Panasonic wired remote controller model CZ-RTC4 can also be used as a servicing tool for diagnostic purposes. The wired remote controller when used in conjunction with the servicing connector part number 623-178-5082 will plug directly into the RC connector at either the indoor or outdoor unit's main printed circuit board. The wired remote controller will provide three different accessible menus when connected to the RC connector on the main indoor outdoor unit circuit board. The servicer can go into a monitoring mode, view alarm history, and access a detailed data settings menu. The main keys used on the wired remote controller to access these different menus will be the wrench set and cancel as shown in this slide. The monitoring mode allows the user to view the different parameters being reported back to the main printed circuit port. Once the wired remote controller is plugged in the RC connector at either the indoor or outdoor unit's main board, the system can now be monitored. In order to gain access to the monitoring mode, press and hold in both the wrench and cancel keys simultaneously for 4 to 5 seconds. Next, press the temperature setting up and down arrow keys to scroll through the different item codes to be monitored. 
Once finished, press the wrench key to exit this mode. This slide shows the actual screen being displayed once the monitoring mode has been accessed on the wired remote controller at the indoor unit. This slide shows all of the indoor unit parameters which can be monitored by the hardwired remote controller. This allows the servicer to view the entering and leaving refrigerant temperatures, return and supplier temperatures, as well as the current position of the electronic expansion valve. The service remote controller can also be utilized to monitor the outdoor unit's different parameters by utilizing the RC connector on the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board. The temperature up and down arrow keys will advance through all the different item codes available for monitoring. The indoor and outdoor unit's main printed circuit board will store any prior alarm codes which have occurred at either the indoor or outdoor unit. To access the Alarm History menu, press and hold the wrench and set keys simultaneously for 4-5 to five seconds. The indoor unit will store up to 4 alarm codes and the outdoor unit will store up to 8 alarm codes. The Alarm History can be cleared by pressing the Cancel key while viewing the stored Alarm History. In order to access the Detailed Data Setting Mode, press the Wrench, Set, and Cancel keys simultaneously for 4-5 to five seconds. The item code number 10 will then be displayed along with the selected item code's current data setting when accessed at the indoor unit as shown in this slide. This slide shows a sample of some of the item codes along with the different data settings which can be set on the indoor unit. A complete listing of these item codes and data settings can be located in the service manuals available on the Panasonic Air Conditioning website. The detailed data settings menu can also be accessed at the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board by connecting the wired remote controller and servicing harness to the RC connector. Press the Wrench, Set, and Cancel keys simultaneously for 4-5 to five seconds. A 0, 0 will now be displayed on the remote controller's display screen. From here, use the up and down arrow keys to scroll to the item code in order to make the necessary change to the data setting. This slide shows a few of the outdoor unit's detailed data settings. For the full listing, refer to the service manual located on the Panasonic Air Conditioning website. The following slides will cover the servicing and alarm code diagnostic procedures for the Panasonic VRF systems. This slide shows the general troubleshooting steps for the Panasonic VRF indoor units. Always verify that the LED light is lit on the board. Next verify there is 208 or 230 volts AC of incoming power available at the L1 and L2 terminals on the wiring termination strip. Also, remember to check the line voltage fuse which is mounted onto the main printed circuit board for continuity. In the event the indoor unit's main printed circuit board was replaced, the EEPROM chip must be swapped over from the defective board and placed back into the new board in the same direction as it was removed. On installations utilizing the hardwired remote controllers, when diagnosing communication errors, check the display screen on the remote controller. A blank display on the remote controller will either indicate an issue with that particular indoor unit or possibly the remote controller itself. Always verify the indoor board is outputting 12 to 15 volts DC on terminals R1 and R2 at the indoor unit's wiring termination strip as shown in this slide. When troubleshooting the outdoor unit, always make sure all phases of power are available with the correct power supply voltage for the model installed. On the three-phase outdoor units, any high voltage legs to ground should be landed on the L3 terminal of the wiring termination strip. 
Also, the power LED should be illuminated on the main printed circuit board under normal operating conditions. If this LED is not lit, check that the filter board is supplying the necessary AC power over to the main printed circuit board on the connector labeled as AC-IN. If the voltage is present at the AC-IN connector, then the main printed circuit board will require replacement. In the event the main printed circuit board was replaced on the outdoor unit, the EE prom chip from the defective board must be removed and placed back into the new replacement board for proper operation. The service remote controller and wiring harness can be plugged into the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board at the RC connector for alarm code retrieval. Also, LEDs 1 and 2 can reveal the current alarm code when lit or blinking. The alarm codes can be displayed on either the hardwired remote controllers, at the indoor unit's indicator lamps, and on the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board through the LEDs labeled as LED1 and LED2. The centralized control device when installed on a system will also show any active alarm code messages as well. This slide shows the five different types of alarm codes which can occur on the Panasonic EcoEye VRF systems. Here is a sample of the alarm code listing showing some of the possible alarm codes which can occur on these VRF systems. A full complete listing of these alarm codes with diagnostic servicing procedures will be located within the service technical manuals located on the Panasonic air conditioning website. The LEDs labeled as LED1 and LED2 on the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board can be utilized to determine the type of alarm code which has occurred on any of the VRF systems. LED1 can blink anywhere from two to six times revealing the letter code and LED2 can blink anywhere from one to 31 times. These two LED lights when paired together will reveal the current alarm code. This alarm code will be shown repeatedly. Certain error codes will require that the incoming power supply to the outdoor unit be de-energized until all the LEDs on the main board have gone completely off. The P-type alarms represent a pre-trip which can occur on either the indoor or outdoor unit. The P22 alarm code is directly related to a problem with either the condenser fan motor, DC drive circuit, or a bad condenser fan motor. The H-type alarms represent that one of the monitoring safety devices, which can be based on current draw, temperature, or pressure, has reached its lowest or highest trip point setting. The H31 alarm message represents a problem with the HIC circuit, which is the drive circuit for the inverter-driven compressors. This board can be tested by conducting a continuity test across the different terminals of the board, as shown within this slide. The E-type alarm codes represent some type of breakdown in communications between the indoor and the outdoor units. Some of these E-alarm codes will also show if there is a communications breakdown between the indoor unit and the wired remote controller. The E-15 alarm code occurs when the outdoor unit locates a smaller quantity of indoor units rather than the set amount. An example of this would be an outdoor unit that has 15 indoor units connected and the outdoor unit can only communicate with 14 of these 15 indoor units. The other main causes of this type of alarm are shown within this slide. The E16 alarm code occurs when the outdoor unit locates a larger quantity of indoor units rather than the set amount. An example of this would be an outdoor unit that has 15 indoor units connected and the outdoor unit locates a total of 16 indoor units. The other main causes of this type of alarm are shown within this slide. 
The E20 alarm code occurs when the outdoor unit is unable to locate and communicate with any of the connected indoor units. When this error message occurs, always check the position of the open short jumper on the main outdoor unit's printed circuit board. This jumper will be factory set in the shorted position. The E04 and E06 alarm codes occur when communications is lost between one or more indoor units and the outdoor unit. The other possibilities for these alarm codes are shown within this slide. The low voltage communications wiring is one of the most critical aspects of any VRF system. The best method for diagnosing a problem within this wiring is by conducting a continuity of test across the U1 and U2 terminals of the indoor and outdoor unit's wiring terminal strip. A good wire should show an approximate ohm value of somewhere between 75 to 100 ohms when tested. If this ohm reading is erratic, this can be an indication of some type of noise interference within the low voltage communications wiring. Improper grounding of this wiring is one of the most commonly encountered problems with these systems. The F-type alarms represent that an indoor or outdoor unit thermistor has become open shorted or is reading outside of its rated parameters. These thermistors will vary in wire length and also have different K-ohm values based on the varying degree of temperatures to be monitored within the different mounting locations on the refrigerant piping. The thermistors on both the indoor and outdoor units provide temperature related details back to both the indoor and outdoor units main printed circuit boards. Whenever these boards are unable to decipher the temperature of these thermistors, an alarm code for the associated thermistor will be activated. When thermistor alarm codes are encountered, always start by checking the connection point of the thermistor at the main printed circuit board. Next, conduct a continuity test of the thermistor on the K-ohm scale of the electrical tester. The values of these thermistors can be located within the service technical manuals located on the Panasonic Air Conditioning website. Here are two examples of the thermistor charts with the associated K-ohm values at different temperature readings for both the indoor and outdoor unit thermistors. The L-type alarms represent a mist setting which can be associated with the main dip switches and knob settings on the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board. This alarm can also be an incorrect setting to the indoor outdoor unit's EE prom chip located on the main printed circuit board as well. The indoor and outdoor unit's main printed circuit boards are equipped from the factory with an EE prom chip. These chips store all the necessary data settings required for identifying these units such as BTU capacity, indoor unit type, system phasing, along with many other details. The L10 alarm code occurs when the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board is replaced without the EE PROM chip being swapped over from the defective board back into the new replacement board. The L alarm codes can also occur when either items on the EE PROM chip are not set properly or the dip switch and knob settings on the outdoor unit's main printed circuit board does not properly reflect the current system's configuration. Shown here within this slide is a picture of the actual EE PROM chip and the associated insertion socket on the board. All of the EE PROM chips will have a marking on one side of the chip identifying the chip's direction. Likewise, the socket on the board which the chip inserts into also has this similar marking. Once both markings are lined up together, the chip is now correctly inserted. If the chip is installed incorrectly, the system will not operate. Located directly onto the main outdoor unit's printed circuit board are a set of three dip switches labeled as SW7. These dip switches give the servicer the ability to bypass a bad compressor while still allowing the system to operate on the one remaining good compressor. The number three dip switch must be turned to the on position to enable this feature. 
Then select the compressor to be bypassed by moving its associated dip switch to the on position on the remaining two dip switches. The following slides will show the operation of the three-way solenoid valve boxes which are only installed with the three-way Panasonic outdoor units. This slide shows the typical symptoms which may be related to a three-way solenoid box not operating properly. Also shown are the items which would need to be verified at the indoor unit, relay box, and three-way solenoid box. This is a complete three-way solenoid box wiring diagram showing the wiring connection from the indoor unit to the relay box along with the field provided 18 gauge 5 conductor thermostat wire connection from the relay box to the three-way solenoid box on terminals 1 through 5. The relay box has a series of low voltage relays which are energized based on the current mode of operation setting being broadcast from either the remote controller or the centralized control device. The solenoid box is powered by a 208 230 volt power supply. This voltage is utilized to energize the different solenoid valves located within the solenoid box itself, which then transfers either low or high pressurized refrigerant over to the indoor unit. This slide shows the three different solenoid valves which are energized on the solenoid box during a call for cooling. These valves are labeled as SUC, Balance, and EP on the three-way solenoid valve box. The liquid refrigerant line passes straight through the solenoid valve box to the indoor unit as shown here in this refrigerant flow diagram. This slide shows the discharge solenoid valve being energized on the solenoid box during a call for heating. This valve is labeled as DIS on the three-way solenoid box. This concludes the EcoI service training video. For any questions or comments about the information presented within this training video, please contact the Panasonic Air Conditioning Technical Support Division and thank you for your business.